Hello, friends, and welcome to Tech Lab. Oh my gosh! Ah! Whoa! We were just attacked. We have to respond. We have to find a way to fight back. Our question today is, how might we use a lever to launch Legos? Say that three times fast. Lever to launch Legos. Here we go. Before we jump into things, let's talk a little bit about some vocabulary so we're all on the same page. If we're talking about a lever, we're talking about a simple machine. A simple machine is a mechanical device that changes the direction or magnitude of force. Now, if you were here for our airplane challenge last week, you know that force is a push or a pull of an object that has mass. And when you think about changing the magnitude of force, think about changing the power of that force. So a simple machine will be a mechanical device that changes the direction or power or magnitude, that's a good word, magnitude, of a force. So in this case, our lever is this piece right here in the middle. And that lever has to have a fulcrum point or a spot where our lever will bend right there. Now, you've probably seen levers if you've ever seen a seesaw. And a seesaw on the playground has a middle balancing point. That's the fulcrum, that's the hinge where our lever will pivot or bend on. That lever is what we're gonna use to make our catapult even more powerful. So let's think about how a seesaw works. If I have a seesaw and it's balanced on both sides, the seesaw will go up and down with no problem. If you get a heavier load on one side, that creates more work for the other side to bend that heavier load back up. What you can do is if that happens is to scooch back on your seesaw and that will balance out the load because the further you are from the fulcrum, the more force you have on the load on the opposite side of the seesaw. Kind of fascinating. So that's called a mechanical advantage. When you have a mechanical advantage, you're able to measure the force amplification of a tool. Now, we're gonna take this mechanical advantage and apply it to a catapult, but we're gonna do it a little bit in reverse. So we're gonna use the shorter side of our lever to be where our power is stored, and then when we release our catapult, ching, all that extra energy will go flying towards, hopefully, whoever attacked us, because that's a problem. If you look at my catapult here, you can see that I've got this pivot right there. And this is a very short side of my lever going back where this is a longer side. What happens then is it multiplies the force of my rubber band pulling down to eventually launch our catapult forward. Now, a catapult uses something called potential energy. Potential energy is the energy that is stored in our rubber bands. Right here, you can see. Once I launch my catapult, it's gonna throw our object forward with kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is the energy an object has when it's in motion. So the heavier the object you throw, the more kinetic energy you have. And if we're trying to take out a castle, you want kinetic energy, friends. We're talking like rocks and stones and boulders. Kinetic energy. Before we build our catapult, I have to introduce you to someone very important. This gentleman is known as Archimedes. Now, Archimedes is an ancient Greek mathematician, a scientist, inventor, astronomer. He was a really brilliant mind way back in the day. He didn't invent the lever, but his mathematical properties are what help us understand the lever. And using that mathematical knowledge, he was able to actually improve catapults and protect his city from the invading Roman army. So we're gonna use some of his knowledge today to help us protect the tech lab because we don't wanna be under attack. Archimedes famously said, if you give me a place to stand, I will move the earth. 
what he was saying is he could use the knowledge he had about levers to apply that to any size object, even something as big as the entire earth. Now, it's a little challenging because there is no lever big enough that is bigger than earth. However, if there were, Archimedes could move the entire planet because the law of levers dictates that it's totally possible. If it's crazy and mind blowing to you, I'd recommend you check out the video links below for some more information because my mind pff, was blown as well. Awesome, so now that we know Archimedes and we uh, can use his tools about levers, let's see if we can build our own Lego catapult that would impress Archimedes himself. And if you find Archimedes fascinating, I would really recommend you check out the death ray that he may or may not have built. Apparently he could burn ships at sea. Sounds like a guy you want on your side. So here we go, our build. So if you look at our catapult, there are a few things we're gonna need. Definitely, we're gonna need Legos. So with our Legos, you're looking for some things that we can use to give you a solid foundation. So if you have a build plate, that's great, but you don't really need a big build plate to make your catapult. We just wanna make sure it's strong enough to kinda of hold all the things together. You're also gonna need a rubber band of some sort. I've got this one right here. Any rubber band will do. If you have like, a, like an elastic for your hair, that could also be awesome. We're looking for a way to kind of build that potential energy. If you have more than one rubber band, you could use a bunch of them to make your catapult even stronger or more powerful. However, there is a balance. Just like a catapult lever has to be balanced, you want to make sure that with more rubber bands, you also have more structural integrity, which if you watched our last video, you could remember from our airplanes, our structural integrity is what holds the mechanism in our machine together. If your rubber bands are too powerful, pff, your Lego might just explode, and that could be a bad news. So with my catapult, the first thing I was looking for was a piece like this that could become my lever. We need something kind of small and light and strong. This is not as long as I would prefer, so I'm gonna keep looking. Oh, there we go. So the longer your lever is, the greater the mechanical advantage. So I can take a Lego piece like this, which is pretty impressive. It could be longer. And I can build it into a longer lever so long as I'm also careful. So if I take these different pieces and I combine them, I can make my lever even stronger. I know, it's crazy. All right, so I have my lever. I made it a little bit longer, so I'm trying to improve my design. This one here, you can see, has a smaller lever. Well, if I make it longer, hopefully it'll give me a greater mechanical advantage. Okay, second step. Now we need to find a way to build our platform that we can build our catapult on. To do this, I'm gonna use my base plate here. And I have my catapult lever in the middle, so it's time to figure out what we can add to the outside. There's lots of different ways and methods that you can build a catapult. By no means do I think I have the best way. Maybe you can build one better than mine, that you can teach me some new tricks to make mine even better. Cool. You'll notice I put this in the middle um, because I want to have the fulcrum kind of this way, but I also have left more of the space in the back because I know that as it's being pulled and launching, that's the direction the force will be pushed against. All right, so for my catapult base, what I did is I made a little notch by using three different rows of Lego bricks. What that notch will let me do is create a way that I can use my rubber bands and have that energy in the rubber band stored on that notch. So I'm gonna grab this, put my rubber band through this way, and right now it's pretty loose. Do you see how floppy and loose that is on there? So I want that tighter. So now I'm gonna grab the rubber band and maybe pull it like this, until it wraps around once or twice. Once you get it wrapped more than once, now it's getting more potential energy. And this is energy that is stored due to stress inside the object, so it's gonna hold that pretty good. I can take my lever, and when I stick this guy in, look at that, that's holding my lever straight up, and I can give it a quick test shot. Whoa, Alrighty, we're ready to start launching things. Now, there is a problem, my lever went flying. To fix that, I'm gonna build a containment device that will hold my lever, rather hold the rubber bands onto the lever arm of my catapult. So I put this guy in, 
and I can see I've got, looks like a few dots here. Let's see if we can find some pieces to make that hold. Aha, excellent. Okay, so now to kind of hold our catapult in, what I'm gonna do is I'm looking at the catapult arm here. I'm gonna put some little one by two pieces, which are these little guys here. So that one by two will go on one side of the rubber band. And now I'll put another little one by two. This is a beautiful purple one. I'm very aesthetic. It's important that your catapults be both deadly and attractive. Preferably not actually deadly, that could be a problem. Please use them with adult supervision and don't take over any small countries. All right, so now I've got two of these pieces on. What that does is it gives me a little channel for the rubber band to kind of come through. Do you see how the rubber band starts here and wraps around? I'm gonna cover that top with another piece like this. Now, when I test fire my catapult, oh, so that's a problem. Ha! If you look, my rubber band had enough power that it caused the arm to stick to the catapult launcher itself. This is where the balance, pardon me, the balance of knowing how much force your catapult is able to withstand versus how much force is in the rubber band itself. So to help fix this problem, what I'm gonna do is take this little smooth piece and I'm gonna add it to my Lego arm where the catapult lever touches the fulcrum or the spot where it's in a bend. So here I can put that lever on and that'll help my catapult hopefully behave itself better. Whoa, definitely getting some action. So now I wanna build supports here to kind of block my catapult in and keep it a little bit more under control. Bricks up here like this will help with keeping the lever part of the arm from going one side or the other. All right, so now I have my catapult lever, this guy here. I've got my base, my rubber bands full of energy and we're pulling back. I need a bucket or basket so I can put something in here to launch. To do that, let's grab, ooh, maybe a piece like this. Sweet. So now for the bucket or basket of my catapult, I have a little spot here where I can put more Lego pieces in so that I'm ready to launch. I have a place that'll hold that payload or the projectile I'm hoping to fire in defense of the tech lab. All right, let's give it a shot. So you can launch all kinds of things. I'd recommend launching Legos, but make sure you pick them up later because they're really not comfortable to step on. Uh, for this little guy, I'm gonna use a really brightly colored Lego, like an orange and white one, so it's easy to find later. Here we go, three, two, one. Wait a second, it went straight down to the table. So a lot of catapults have a cross arm that kind of tells the catapult when to stop. And that'll help catapult forward. So to build a cross arm, which it appears my catapult is in need of, I'm gonna add some more Lego blocks. Okay, so now I have this cross arm that I hope when I pull back on my catapult will stop and launch our device. And here we go, three, two, one. Oh, it went flying. All right, friends, so now let's see what you can do to build your best Lego catapult. How far can you launch your Lego pieces? My current record is 110 inches. So when you're ready to start launching, make sure you get your tape measure out and you can measure how far your catapult is able to fire. If you don't have a tape measure, then you do that heel toe, heel toe, walk, and let's see how far your catapult fired. Lastly, if you've already done our catapult challenge and you're looking to take your catapult game up a whole nother level, instead of using rubber bands, what else could you use as your energy source? If you're wondering, you could use a heavier weight and you would make something called a trebuchet. I know, cool word, trebuchet. What a trebuchet does is, because they didn't have rubber bands back in medieval times, a trebuchet has weight on one side. When it was released, it flings a lighter payload at a castle. Uh, if you're curious, check out the links below. There's a really cool trebuchet made by a student that I once had, Gion. 
that he built this out of two by fours. It's totally awesome and worth checking out. All right, friends, if you found this video helpful and entertaining, I hope a little bit fun, please hit that like button. If you wanna be here for our next challenge, hit that subscribe. And until next time, I will see you around the lab. Keep it safe, defend it, catapults away. Brrrr.